in to the Streets Talk Show with your host, Loretta LaRue Duncan Fowler. It's all about uplifting and encouraging you through real stories from real people. Every week, we chat with folks making a difference in their communities and for God's kingdom. Get ready to be inspired, learn something new, and discover the great plans God has for you. Join us for an amazing episode of the Streets Talk Show with your host, Loretta LaRue Duncan Fowler. Hi, I'm your host, Loretta LaRue Duncan Fowler, and welcome to The Streets, um, where we take the gospel of Jesus Christ to the streets over the digital highways and streaming byways. Here we talk to the most innovative and thought-provoking people of our generation about what's going on in their lives so that they can help you with what's going on in your life. So come with me, Miss LaRue, as we take it to the streets on the Daily Gospel Network. Check out Loretta LaRue Duncan Fowler's book, For the Believers, a guidebook to manifesting abundance, increasing your financial net worth, restoring the paper cuts in your soul, and transforming your life. It's all about healing from past hurts with God's help and finding a meaningful life. This essential guide offers tips for a complete life change, covering everything from money to inner peace. Grab your copy on Amazon and start your journey to a fuller life. I have a special guest. Her name is Precious Neal. She is an author. I'm going to just um, tell you a little bit about her. She is better known as P. She's my Eastern Star sister. Sisters of Faith in the house, y'all. <laughs> we told you. Anyway, her book is called Allow Me to Reintroduce Myself The Lessons I Learned on the Backside of the Mountain. Um, Precious Neal is better known as P. She is a daughter, a sister, a mentor, a youth coach, and a college graduate um, currently pursuing her Master's of Communication Management from Arizona State University. She's passionate about young people. She helps teens 13 to 18 by mentorship and educational coaching, a licensed minister in the Northern California District Council, Pentecostal Assemblies of the World, Inc., and she is a member of the Rock Church Bay Area under Pastor Christopher and Lady Nakia Foster, where she serves in ministry. She is also the vice president of the Pentecostal Young People Union in the Northern California District Council. And she is a contributor to the International Young People's Union under the Pentecostal Assemblies of the World. So when we come back, we're going to have a warm welcome for our sister, Precious Neal, after the commercial break. Dive into Allow Me to Reintroduce Myself by Precious Neal and discover a powerful tale of overcoming adversity. Through unwavering self-resilience and the steadfast love of Christ, Precious emerges triumphant. Her story is a beacon of hope, offering strength and inspiration to all. Embark on this transformative journey available for purchase on Amazon. Your path to empowerment awaits. Hi, welcome back. I'm your host, Loretta LaRue Duncan Fowler. Call me Miss LaRue. And um, we have Precious Neal, my sister. And I'm just so excited to have you here, Precious. Thank you for taking the time to come and join us. This is our first inaugural show for the Streets Talk Show here on the Daily Gospel Network. And we're just blessed. <laughs> and I'm just so excited. So precious. Thank um, you for having me. <laughs> child, it's been a long time in the making. Look at God. So precious. Look at you. Won't he do it? Yes, he will. Girl, <laughs> he is doing it to the most. <laughs> So check this out. I would like to talk to you about um, your book, which is Allow Me to Reintroduce mm -hmm. Myself, The Lessons I Learned on the Backside of the Mountain. I have read this book. Mm -hmm. This book is excellent. Oh, my God. It's got so many nuggets in it, so much wisdom. Um, just uh, our topic will be your book and also struggles that young people face in the church and how to overcome them. That's the topic of our mm -hmm. show and her book, um, allow me to reintroduce myself deals with that particular, with that topic and so much more. 
Her book is on mm -hmm. Amazon.com. So I'm going to just get that out there right now. So you know where to go to get it. And um, there'll be more information also at the end of the show. So Precious, can you give our audience a brief overview of your book? Allow me to reintroduce myself, the lessons I learned on the backside of the mountain and how it relates to the struggles faced by young people in the church. Oh, wow. Um, so allow me to reintroduce myself is um, my guide, my journey of, of how I come to be who I am today. Um, I am a pew baby. I am a church baby, been in church for all my life. I don't remember other than the time that I left the Lord where I wasn't in church. Um, my grandpa was a pastor. My mother was a minister, evangelist, all these things. Um, and it's what we grew up to be having, you know, you got to be in church. You got to do this. You got to do that. But as I had gotten older, it was more of why are these things the way they are? I began to get inquisitive, ask questions. And my frustration came where my questions weren't being answered. And I'm like, why we can't do this? Uh, I, we are we are old school Pentecostal uh, apostolics. You know, you wear your skirts below your knees. You know, you don't show anything. At the time, we, we couldn't even wear earrings. And I'm like, why we can't wear earrings? What's going on? And... Uh, I could never really got a straight edge answer. And as I got older and, and come into my teenage years, I wanted to do different things. I was like, well, why we can't do this? It's all these rules and regulations. I'm sure that God didn't meant for this to be like, where we just got to be this straight and narrow. And um, some things happened where I left the Lord. And then, you know, as God often does, he, he sends trouble our way. Yeah. He allows trouble to come in trials and tribulations and where I was rerouted back to him. And I was like, I'm sure this, I'm not the only person that deals with these things, that has these questions, that has these struggles and uh, have the space where, you know, I've done so much and I've, I've strayed so far away from God that he can't reach me. Like just, I cannot be used. I'm just this, I am the way I am. But this book was just, just an encouragement to those who are struggling that no matter where you are, God can reach you on what level, wherever, whoever, however, and he meets you exactly where you are. And that is, the short version of that, uh, this has sort of allowed me to reintroduce myself. Yes. And I, I agree. I, I come from a Pentecostal background as well. So I can truly relate to what you're talking about. Um, I was Koji more than apostolic, but apostolic, mm -hmm. you know, is strict. No makeup, no nothing. Our pastor did mm -hmm. allow us to wear pants, but we couldn't do it in the sanctuary. And we could wear makeup, but very minimal. And then the mothers, you know, they made sure <laughs> that you wasn't doing so much or doing the most. Uh -huh. Very strict upbringing. So I totally understand that, the struggles that uh, young people face. And I spent my whole youth in the Church of God in Christ. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I get it. And you're young, when you're young and you see what the world is doing and everybody else is doing and you wonder, okay, how come I got to be like this like am i really going to hell if i put on a pair of shorts that kind of thought mm -hmm. so in your personal journey in your book you share personal experiences and lessons learned can you delve into your personal journey and highlight some of the challenges you faced in the church as a young person uh sure um well one the biggest thing we had uh that i had growing up was the whole, um, the clothing, you can't wear anything. Uh, your, your skirts have to be passionese. You can't wear anything. We are to be separate from the world. We not, we are, we live in it, but we are not to be above it. And my thing, uh, was I like to wear earrings and I was told I couldn't wear earrings. I'm like, why, why we can't, why we can't wear earrings? They're pretty. They, you know, they're supposed to, they're they're accessories for a reason. It's to accessorize your beauty, you know, those type of things. And I was just flat out told no. Um, and one thing about human nature, if you're told no, it's something that you want and you can't have it, it makes you want it even more. So right. I went into this rebellious phase, 
the more you told me I didn't, I couldn't wear them, I wore them. Okay. And then it was like, oh, okay, well, they can't be huge. Oh, I'm going to wear my huge earrings. You know, I'm going to do what I want. I don't believe that. And I got to the point where I was like, I don't believe I'm going to hell if I wear these earrings. I don't huh. believe that, you know, I wear a pair of pants. God is going to just strike me down. And once I began to question, it was, it, it became, oh, boy, well, you're being disobedient. You're oh. being rebellious. Uh-huh. And, you know, that's, a, you know, rebellion is a sin and these things. And it had got to a point where I was, I got to a point in any, like, young people's life, we well, struggle. It's like a tug of war between the world and the church, you know. Culture pulls you this way. This is what you need to have. This is what you need to look like to be accepted and things like that. And I had those same struggle in the church, oh. saved and all. Um, still struggling, uh-huh. still struggling. I was the best. I can shout and do all that. But when all the church music and stuff go down, I'm still struggling. Uh-huh. I need some help. I need some encouragement. I need someone to help me direct my way. Not just, you can't do this. You can't do that. You can't do this. And I had gotten to a point where I was like, I need help. And I found myself really struggling, really battling. And um, what kind of really turned the tide for me, I um, I went to... Uh, my uh, pastor, uh, and I was confession. Confession is good for the soul, right? You confess your sins, right? And I was, I confessed, uh, and I was preached over, over the pulpit. Oh, my. And didn't, didn't use no, the only thing the pastor didn't use was my name. Wow. <laughs> and I was like, what? what? Wow. And I was so mad, and I said, God, if this is what you're about, I don't want you. Uh, I don't want you. Uh, I, like the church is supposed to be your safe place. Uh-huh. And why am I sitting here? You telling my business, you're exposing me. Right. Uh-huh. So I was like, I left. So I was like, I don't, I don't want this. I'm going to go and do my own. Th- I'll take my chances. Uh-huh. That's exactly what it was. Um, but looking back, I was running um, from the call of my life, uh-huh. uh, real big time. And I went away. I went across the country to school. I was like, I'm out of here. Like, uh-uh. you know, I went and partied and did yeah. what I wanted to do. And I was like, I don't, I had nothing to do with church. Uh-huh. I knew the word, didn't listen to it, didn't adhere to the word. And, you know, things begin to happen my way. And, you know, I will, I was trying to fit in, uh-huh. but for some reason couldn't fit in, uh, you know, try to do the things that, you know, my peers were doing and things like that. And I would just never fit. Even my, my quote unquote friends at the time, you'd be like, that don't look right on you at all. Like uh-huh. they, it was a, it was a running joke, but you know, it was true. They was like, you don't fit. So they could see you don't the anointing fit. of God on your life. Even while yes, you're one out thing here in the about, world. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Absolutely. One yeah. thing about God is when you are marked, others will notice. Yes, they will. You may not notice that how, but you others take notice. Um, I was trying to go, I was trying to get into a club. I was underage. See, this is me just confessing. I'm telling all my business. Uh no, it's in a book. <laughs> um, I was trying to get into the club and the bouncer let all my friends in, but when he got to me, he was like, what are you doing? Wow. You know, you ain't got no business being here. Mm-hmm. I was like, what you mean? I look good. I look, <laughs> you know, I'm all put together. Well, I'm like, you know. Wow. And he was like, you have no business being here. It took me going to the other side of the country for someone who don't know me uh-huh. to remind me that I see you. you. You have the hand of God on your life. Right. And what are you doing? You are squandering this. You are squandering this anointing. You are squandering this blessing that God has for you. What are you doing? And you know, after standing there and arguing with him, he did not. He did not let me in the club, y'all. <laughs> and I just had no choice. I had literally, and my friends that I was with, they did not care. They went right on the club. Didn't even care about me. And I just had to get in a taxi and go back uh, to my room. And I was like, wow. And a couple of days later, I was in. Uh, I was in a study pod. I was studying, and I heard the voice of the Lord clear as day. Wow. He said, "You're gonna make a choice." Yeah, see, so you're gonna make a choice. 
It's like when your father, when your parent gets tired of you, you're like, what you going to do? Right. You're going to be in and out. You know, right. you were younger and you used to run in that house. And then your parent be like, look, what you going to do? You're going to be in or you're going to be out? Right. Make up your mind right now. You're not going to keep right. doing this. You're going to make up your mind. That's so I felt like that's that what my father, my father was on. He's like, you got to make a choice. Right. Because at this point, you're wasting time. So I need you to make a choice. You need to make a choice. <laughs> and so that day, I was like, okay, Lord, I'm all in. Let's do this. Right. <laughs> So now we're going to go to a quick commercial break. And when we come back, we're going to um, talk to you. Uh, I have some other questions I want to talk to you about and um, mm -hmm. overcoming obstacles and um, cultural and generational gaps. So um, we have a commercial break right now. And then we'll be back to talk to my dear sister, Precious Neal, and her book, Re. Um, her book, Allow Me to Reintroduce Myself, The Lessons I Learned on the Backside of the Mountain. And we're, we're focusing on the struggles that young people face in the church and how to overcome them. So we'll be right back. Get your copy of Loretta LaRue Duncan Fowler's powerful book, In Search of a Father's Love. Loretta tells her story of overcoming difficult early years and many hardships through heartfelt poems and stories. She shares how she moved from feeling left by her dad to overcoming abuse and sadness, finding her own strength and peace. Filled with personal tales and Bible quotes, her book inspires readers to find their light and faith. Don't miss this journey to happiness. Find it on Amazon now. All right. Welcome back to the Streets talk show on the Daily Gospel Network and my special guest, Sister uh, Miss Precious Neal, uh, Minister Precious Neal, which we don't you know, hear. <laughs> we so cool on the title. <laughs> but um, so Precious, in our, you were talking about identifying uh, the struggles, the struggles that you had when you, um, when you were young uh, in the church, and we, we've had the similar struggles. I think what's, what strikes me is that I'm considerably older than you are, and I don't want to date myself, but let's just keep it 100. The same struggles that she went through, I went through in my teen years. And here we are. That was the 70s, okay? We're in 2024. There is an issue when the church, when we're still going through the same struggles that the um, that I went through in the 70s, that's when I came into my Pentecostal upbringing. Before then, it was Baptist, and then I went to Pentecostal because I felt like the Baptist folks weren't saved. They smoked and they drank and they cussed. <laughs> <laughs> they had the Baptist sins. And so I went that way. <laughs> but anyway, this ain't about me. It's about Sister Precious here in her book. But I just want to say that. Um, and she's, um, you know, in the 80s, when you came into your teen years, the 80s, the, well, I'm sorry, the 90s. I'm not dating you. The 90s, 2000s, yes. <laughs> the 2000s? Okay. I'm a, I'm a millennium. Yeah. Oh, no, <laughs> well, see, don't get me. I don't even know. I just know I'm a boomer. Like, okay. <laughs> to look that up if they want to Google it, what a boomer is. But let's just say this. So we're still going through those struggles. And so the last, mm -hmm. the last question I want to have is, um, the book talks about overcoming challenges. Can you just share some key strategies or lessons from your own experience that can help our young people navigate and overcome the obstacles they may encounter in church, whether it's um, apparel, um, um, sexual promiscuity, uh, peer pressure, you know, uh, cause we mm -hmm. all have friends that everybody ain't saved. You know what I'm saying? Yes. How do you, how do, can you just give them some key wisdom so that they know that their journey is not just their journey, that we've all been through it and we all came out on the other side and we're all lifting up the name of Jesus. Cause that's what it's about. Right. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, for me, one thing I would say is there is nothing new under the sun. What the enemy does, and he's very strategic with this, he repackages it differently. Say that. It's the same product. Yes. It's just repackaged and presented differently. Mm -hmm. And I think what happens is with the church, we are so 
just dogmatic and straight and with no room for error mm. with no room for error and we are just this focus this is this institution this is what we are to be until jesus comes mm. and that's where a lot of our hiccups is that's where my hiccups was i'm like there's no room for error what do you mean he came because there was an error in humanity right so he came to correct error say that and he didn't say we were going not to continue to mess up that's just we're going to be messing up until the day he cracks the sky right so with with all of these and with these peer pressures and with these um these obstacles i would say to have uh open my and understand give yourself some grace Okay. You you will mess up. Right. That's a part of it. Right. The thing about God and He gives us the Spirit, it will get you back in line. Right. It is not where there was no condemn, condemnation in Christ Jesus. Right. He is not here to condemn you. That is one of the biggest tactics of the enemy is right. to condemn you. Right. No, you are you were bought with a price. He loves you. He came and died so you can have life and have it more abundantly. Yes, you're gonna stumble, but the fact of the matter is, you get back up. Right. You ask yes, for forgiveness, and you keep pressing towards the mark. Uh -huh. That is what you do, and also find you a circle that will hold you accountable. Be like, hey, sis, I know. Yeah, I understand that. I've been there. You want that accountability, and you want the realness. We live in a culture where I want real. Huh. Talk to me real. Right. Don't give me no facade. Right. Don't don't try to, you know, baby me. Give me the real. Have those people that will hold you accountable. Be like, yo, since I see you going a different way, but, you know, God says this and he wants you back in line and I'm here and all these things. That's what my sister do for me. She'd be like, girl, you know, God got something for you, but you got to do A, B, C, D. I'm like, all right, sis, let's go. And you, you want those people. And that's the best way. You need to. Uh, you a circle jesus had his own team he had a core and then he had his three you better pray. that kept that his circle wow. you understand so you want you want somebody who will keep you accountable and also who would speak into your life yeah speak into your life positively yeah. tell you what god has for you yeah you you have those yeah. you have those outside voices that want to you know they speak up on you they pray upon you but you really want those genuine who have your back and who will push you towards the mark this uh this life this race is not meant to be run alone you need someone yeah jesus had his 12. that's right everybody had them so this race is not meant to be run alone you need your team whether that's one or two who will help you get to where you need to go amen amen see that's what i'm talking about sis we um we have to all we have to stick together and be accountable and we have to take mm -hmm. the acts of the fruit of the spirit see because that's what Absolutely. god is really looking at the fruit that you're bearing love kindness mm -hmm. temperance empathy for people discipline you know that's mm -hmm. what you're coming back for somebody that encompasses that so precious i want to thank you so much for being on um the streets talk show here on the daily gospel network you have blessed my soul today and i'm praying that um that this interview will bless many, many, many people. And so um, you guys, her book is called Reintroduce Myself, The Lessons I Learned on the Backside of the Mountain. And the topic for, um, and our topic today was struggles that young people face in the church. You will be able to get the information on where to get the book at the end of, the, um, at the end of our episode. And so I wanna thank you for watching this, watching this episode of The Streets. And thank you again to our guest, Sister Precious Neal. And just God bless you, sis. And I am your host, Loretta LaRue Duncan Fowler, but my friends call me Miss LaRue. I consider myself to be your friends. And remember Luke 14 says, go out into the highways and the byways and the hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. I look forward to seeing you again on our next episode. God bless you. And thank you so much for taking it to the streets. Have an excellent day and be blessed. Thank you for joining us on the Streets Talk Show, hosted by Loretta LaRue Duncan Fowler. The talk show dedicated to uplifting and encouraging you by sharing true stories from individuals making a positive impact in their communities and advancing God's mission. We invite you to tune in weekly as we explore these inspiring journeys. 
Until our next episode, we wish you God's blessings. Remember, you're part of the Streets Talk Show family. Take care and see you soon from Loretta and the entire team. Check out Loretta LaRue Duncan Fowler's book, For the Believers, a guidebook to manifesting abundance, increasing your financial net worth, restoring the paper cuts in your soul, and transforming your life. It's all about healing from past hurts with God's help and finding a meaningful life. This essential guide offers tips for a complete life change, covering everything from money to inner peace. Grab your copy on Amazon and start your journey to a fuller life. Looking for inspiration, motivation, and the good news of Jesus Christ? Look no further, the Daily Gospel Network has what you need. With more than 300 ministries from all over the country broadcasting every week, you're sure to get your dose of spirit-filled encouragement from the great programs on the Daily Gospel Network. Catch the Daily Gospel Network on Roku, Amazon Fire, Apple TV, all mobile devices, and the internet. Discover Lessons Learned, A Poet's Life by Loretta LaRue Duncan Fowler, a book filled with poetry, stories, and life lessons. Loretta shares her personal journey, combining her own poems and stories with insights from the Bible and her life's experiences. This book aims to entertain, enlighten, and offer wisdom to support you through life's journey. It's designed to inspire, encourage, and empower you. Find your copy on Amazon today and start exploring these life-changing lessons. ministry leaders. Have you ever considered growing your ministry with television? Well, the Daily Gospel Network could be what you've been looking for. As one of the nation's largest Christian broadcasting companies, the Daily Gospel Network broadcast all over the world on popular streaming platforms like Roku, Amazon Fire, and Apple TV. If you're looking to grow and reach more people, the Daily Gospel Network could be your solution. Get your copy of Loretta LaRue Duncan Fowler's powerful book, In Search of a Father's Love. Loretta tells her story of overcoming difficult early years and many hardships through heartfelt poems and stories. She shares how she moved from feeling left by her dad to overcoming abuse and sadness, finding her own strength and peace. Filled with personal tales and Bible quotes, her book inspires readers to find their light and faith. Don't miss this journey to happiness. Find it on Amazon now. Thank you for joining us on The Streets Talk Show, hosted by Loretta LaRue Duncan Fowler, the talk show dedicated to uplifting and encouraging you by sharing true stories from individuals making a positive impact in their communities and advancing God's mission. We invite you to tune in weekly as we explore these inspiring journeys. Until our next episode, we wish you God's blessings. Remember, you're part of The Streets Talk Show family. Take care and see you soon from Loretta and the entire team. Looking for inspiration, motivation, and the good news of Jesus Christ? Look no further, the Daily Gospel Network has what you need. With more than 300 ministries from all over the country broadcasting every week, you're sure to get your dose of spirit-filled encouragement from the great programs on the Daily Gospel Network. Catch the Daily Gospel Network on Roku, Amazon Fire, Apple TV, all mobile devices, and the internet. Attention ministry leaders. Have you ever considered growing your ministry with television? Well, the Daily Gospel Network could be what you've been looking for. As one of the nation's largest Christian broadcasting companies, the Daily Gospel Network broadcast all over the world on popular streaming platforms like Roku, Amazon Fire, and Apple TV. If you're looking to grow and reach more people, the Daily Gospel Network could be your solution. Dive into Allow Me to Reintroduce Myself by Precious Neal and discover a powerful tale of overcoming adversity. Through unwavering self-resilience and the steadfast love of Christ, Precious emerges triumphant. Her story is a beacon of hope, offering strength and inspiration to all. Embark on this transformative journey, available for purchase on Amazon.